How's it, everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to How's It Cousins, the podcast where we look at the unique things that people do. We talk about them. We relate to them. We have fun with them. Today, I want to talk to you about football, but not just any type of football, American football, because, well, I'm in America. So, and specifically, we want to look at what's going on in the NFL with Le'Veon Bell and Earl Thomas in 2018. How's it, Chris? Are you talking about Le'Veon Bell? I'm down to talk about Le'Veon Bell. Let's do this. Aloha, Alvin. So nice of you to pop into the podcast. Yeah, man. It's always good to chill with you. All right, but before we get into that, I want to remind y'all that we are part of the How's It Network. If you want to see more stuff, Check out, check out HowIsItNetwork.com. If you want to hear more of this podcast, we're on all the popular podcast services. Is any anything you got, Alvin? Yes, I am Aloha Alvin, and you can find me at AlohaAlvin.com. All right, so the topic of today, and I promise we won't do this all the time, uh, we're going to kind of center around two people, but it's a very linked story, so it makes sense. And... I don't profess to know everything about football, American football, mind you. But, you know, I play fantasy. I, you know, I watch sometimes. And it, it's a thing, you know, it's a, it's a societal thing in the United States to, to know football. So this, for this show, we're going to be talking about Le'Veon Bell slash Earl Thomas. For those who don't know Le'Veon Bell... Very highly regarded running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's been in the league for a number of years and is currently sitting on my fantasy bench for the past number of weeks. Uh, Earl Thomas. And this is why I fucking care about this. But it it, it dives into an interesting story. Earl Thomas, he plays safety for the Seattle Seahawks. He was on the Super Bowl winning and Super Bowl losing Seahawks teams. And... The, the story behind it is that, so Le'Veon Bell, he, he's a running back, very highly regarded, and current, you know, up, as of this date, so I may be dating myself, he has not played a single game this year because he's holding out. As in, he hasn't signed what they, what they would call his franchise charter. Now, kind of segue into it, every year, an NFL team can choose to put what's called the franchise tag on their on a player. And what that means is that that player is, I guess we'll say, con- without contract, he's obligated to the team and he gets paid a set amount of money. It, it's, non, it's, it's always a set amount of money and it's based on his seniority in the league and all, and all those things. So, tr- and comments and at me if I'm wrong, but... Le'Veon Bell, this is the second year in a row that the Pittsburgh Steelers has put the franchise tag on him, which means that he's kind of like going year by year he at a time. He doesn't have a long-term contract. So last year, they put the franchise tag on him and he didn't, didn't come to any preseason game or any preseason practice. He held out all the way to the beginning of the regular season before signing his franchise tag tag basically signing it the the one year ding deal whatever you want to call it right. and then showing up and playing so this year he's decided to hold out into the regular season every week he does that he loses one sixteenth or one seventeenth of his paycheck so he doesn't get paid now last year he didn't show up for preseason but he got paid his whole salary because he showed up for the regular season mm. so the more interesting part is that his his reasoning is that he feels that if the organization wanted him long term, like if they were gonna invest in him, then they would give him a multi year deal. Oh, okay, okay, got it. He, got it. he also believes, and it's true with his not with his you know the stats and numbers. He also believes that he is worth a large amount of money because comparable running backs on other teams that get the same workload that he does got you know large contracts recently david thomas being one todd Gurley being another one so he believes that the way in which the steelers use him which is a lot like to to be 
to put it in perspective, he I he's on my fantasy team because I drafted him number two overall. Because Damn. me, the idiot, thought fuck, there's no way he he he's gonna hold out into the regular season. It's gonna be just like last year. He's gonna he's gonna start from game one. But the the reason why I drafted him number two because that's where he kind of sits in the overall fantasy football rankings. He he just gets that much points. He gets that much usage. Wow. You know, this guy he averaged wow. he touches the ball over twenty times a game every single time. Sometimes up upwards of thirty. So, and that's wow. a lot. Yep. So he believes that he's worth more money. Maybe he is. And more so in that if, if he wants, we'll say, longevity in his football career, then he wants a team to, or at least the Steelers in this case, to pick him up for multi-years. Because now every, at the end of every season, he has no idea what's going to happen to him. You know, he could go, he could, they could sign him again, franchise him again, or someone else could try to go after him. So that's why this year he decides, nah, I'm, I'm just not going. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sign my franchise charter until, you know, you guys, we're going to talk about a multi-year deal. I mean, we don't have to sign it right now, but you have to show interest that you're going to invest in me in the long term, you know, so he has some longevity and he'll hold out because in essence on the franchise tag, right, he has no long-term contract. So at the end of this year, he'll be a free agent without a contract, right? If he plays this year and gets the same workload that the Steelers normally give him, there's a high probability that he gets injured. It's yes, actually pretty likely that. that that you know running running backs in the NFL. It, it's funny, like when you know you play fantasy football and you draft running backs, already knowing that they're probably not going to play all 16 games of the year. You kind of know that at some point they're going to get dinged up, sprained ankle. Turf toe, take a take your pick. Your running, your starting running backs don't normally play the entire season. So, Bell's Bell's argument is that if I pl- if I play and you guys beat the shit out of me like normal, it's likely I'll be injured. If I get injured, if I get a bad injury, that hurts my chances at any type of contract with any team next year. So if it's not going to be you guys, either a either a trade me or b. Or B, uh, talk about a long-term deal. That's that's kind of the genesis behind it. So Earl Thomas, same kind of situation with the Seattle Seahawks. He's not a franchise tag player, but he's on the last year of his contract. He also did not play during the preseason and off-season training. He showed up on day one. So he decides that he's gonna play on you know from regular season day one. And, but under the same logic that shit, like I don't have a long-term deal. The Seahawks don't seem interested in a long-term deal with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, I'm going to play well, but I'm going to skip practices during the week so I can heal up from Sunday. Mm. That that's his logic. Okay, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna show because you know I'm gonna show during this year that I, I'm still performing at a high level, which he was. He was probably through the first you know few weeks of the season, he was probably the best safety in the league, arguably, arguably of course. But he would skip practices during the week to kind of, as he say, protect himself because the team's not investing in me long term. I'm gonna invest in myself. Interesting. Sad thing is that. You know, a few weeks into the season, he actually gets injured and mm. breaks his leg. Season-ending injury. So the exact thing that he was trying to protect himself from actually happened. He, he took the precautions against it and he breaks his leg. And the, the funny article or the meme is that as he was getting carted off the field with a broken leg that he knows, oh, I'm done for the season. I'm probably fucked for a long time. Like more than likely not going to get a con- a good contract with another team next year because I'm going to yes. be coming off of an injury. So anyway, he knows all this as he's being carted off famously and he's and he sticks the middle finger up towards the Seattle Seahawks sideline. I get that. Like, and it, it was kind of a big thing. Yeah. Like, a, you know, that gesture. That. Yep. yep. So that that's kind of the story and it's the interesting part. Again, we we think, oh, these fucking guys are millionaires. Right. But if you really think about it, like the physical abuse and punishment that these guys do week in and week out for our entertainment is ridiculous. 
it's out of control. So I, I can almost, I mean, it sucks to see guys, you know, like kind of say, fuck you, I'm not going to practice. And even though it, technically it's kind of your job to, but right. at the same time, I can kind of understand that like, you know, these guys, like they put themselves through so much at some point, like maybe they do have to think about that kind of thing. Right, right. Okay, I got plenty to say, man. All right, go um, for it. I That's a story know. as we know it, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I don't have the specific things on these guys, but I've, I have philosophical things to throw at it. Okay, so let's go with this one first. Let's say, um, okay, I grew up cause, calling this poison vision, so let's just have fun with that for a second. Let's say there's some girl, you really like her, um, like a lot, okay? She's like the best thing ever in your head. So one day you say to me, dude, that girl is awesome over there. And I'm like, well, d- good, fucking talk to her. I don't know. And then because you have what I call poison vision, your vision has been poisoned. You walk by her. She says, hey, morning. And you're like, yes, yes. Did you see that? She fucking loves me. It's the best thing. I'm like, whoa, whoa. That was a hello. That's all I saw. So that's what poison vision refers to. Now, I remember that more, term before. We've used that like, yes, yeah, long I'm, time I'm, I remember, I remember that from a long time ago. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. The example that I've heard in like psychology books and stuff, uh, they mentioned the red car. Let's say you're considering buying a red car. You don't own it yet. You're not even like signing paperwork, but you're thinking about it. You walk down the street. Oh, shit. Red car. Walk down the street. Wow, another red car. And to you, it sure feels like, wow, red cars everywhere. But of course, the reality is, dude, that guy had that car 10 years ago. You just notice it now because of the way your brain is looking at it, you know? Um Okay, that's not quite the same as where I'm going with this, but I will say that perspective is a thing. Um, it's I Okay, so in The Secret, there's a book, they say, if you dream about a feather and you are powerful enough to at this, you can wake up and have that feather. Not, not that it appears in your hand, but like you're walking down the street, there it is. That's the thing. I summoned it from my dreams. I don't quite feel that way. I think that's a bit much. Having said that, certain things, I think, if you keep looking out for them, they quote-unquote happen. It's kind of like a summoning, but not quite. Um, What I'm getting at is, if you're worried every fucking game you're going to get injured, that could be a thing. You know, like, I can't say for sure. I'm not saying the dude jumped in front of the enemy team and said, nail me or some shit. But I do wonder how much that affected him, because he kept talking about it. Plus, the flip side, too, is the enemy team probably knows he's thinking about it a lot. He's worried about it. It affects his gameplay. Um, in in Sun Tzu, The Art of War, I think it was The Art of War, but the statement was made, one man can terrify an army. And it sounds silly. Like, how does that work? Well, the the one guy, you know, is um, if he is attacks in a certain way and he makes them worry about him all the time, it affects their mindset. Now, normally in a 10v1 or a 100v1, you wouldn't give a shit. But if you magnify the problem in your own head, it changes things. And I'm wondering if that's part of it. No, I can't. I, I'm not happy at all that some dude got injured. And especially if it cost him money, too. That sucks, too. But I do wonder about that. You know, like what the brain does, especially in his own case. That'd be different if he said, look at that guy over there. That guy over there got injured. See, that could have been me. No, no, no. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, oh, crap, I got injured. Middle finger time. Um. Yeah, I just wonder about that. That's all. I I have no claims to powers over the universe or anything like that, but I do question that sometimes. You know, like how you see things, how when you worry about it, it affects things. That's a very interesting perspective. I never, I actually never really thought about it like that with respect to this situation. Yeah. But I see what you're saying in yeah, that yeah. it's possible, right? Entirely possible that if this thing that you're trying to prevent, like you're, if if you are thinking about it that much then maybe in some way you are willing it to happen yes, maybe which is spooky yeah yes. very much so, so very yes. very much so okay so here's the other thing that i was thinking about all right um i can tell you that the average person me included if some guy like let's say bill gates came up to me and he said all right man i'm gonna hire you oh shit all right that sounds good what's up and he goes i will pay you 100 dollars an hour now, I'm not going to do the math, but I'm pretty sure every human I know would be like, that's pretty amazing money. $100 an hour, I'm having a great day. Bill Gates, thank you for the job. I'm appreciating all this. Then maybe I start work or I meet another guy 
And the other guy is like, hey, are you working for Bill Gates? I'm like, fuck yeah, I am. This is great. And then we start talking about money. And the other guy says, I earn $101 an hour. Okay, now, now. Am I pissed? Should I be pissed? Uh, okay, first of all, what's your thoughts on this? Say you're the $100 an hour guy and you met the 101. I don't What care. are your thoughts? Okay, okay, thank you. In see, general, I don't care. Ah, see, that's how I feel too. I feel the same way. I'm earning some good money, do some investing, you know, whatever, vacation, whatever, stupid shit, whatever. But studies have shown that $100 guy now says, hey, fuck you, man. How come that other guy gets 101? Fuck this. Give me 101. Fuck all of you. Fuck this. You know, like, dude, weren't you happy like 10 minutes ago? He was happy 10 minutes ago. Okay, so okay. To, I, I see where you're getting. Yes. <laughs> but to, to put it in perspective, and okay. I, I, I'm not quite 100% in the numbers, but to put it into perspective, the franchise tag player, Le'Veon Bell, okay. is he, that, I mean, it's a good amount of money, but it's much, it's not just 100 to 101. It's much less than, ah, than those other, okay. other top backs get. Okay. Hmm. It, it, it's a fraction. I mean, well, maybe like half or I, I don't know exactly, but it's a large sure, sure. amount less. So it's not okay. 100 to okay. 101. It's like 100 to like 150 or something, 100 to, or 200 to 100, you know? It's See, a lot. Okay. Uh, but on that note, the question still applies. Weren't you happy 10 minutes ago, $100 man? I was happy then. See, I don't know. Like, uh, like you said, what if I met a guy 150? Uh, maybe that would bother me. I'm not sure. See, that, that's a fair point. That's a fair point, too. If it was a bigger number, how would that affect me, you know? But studies have shown the $100 guy, he's got something to say. Like, that. that's because they've done research on pay and stuff. No, I, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying, like, equal work equal, equal work aside, equal everything else aside, 100 to 101, someone would be pissed. Yeah. But yeah. see, once again, like, you and I would be like, fuck, I don't care. But Yeah, see? But no, <laughs> again, right. what if it was 100 to 200? And True. Like, Wait Double, a minute, right? something's Double. wrong here, True. you know? Mm. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. That's a fair point. Like, uh, and and like you're saying, not just not the number, not just not knowing the numbers for these guys, but even in this theoretical example, what is my upset number? I I don't know. I guess if he was earning five hundred dollars an hour, like five times what I'm earning, I guess. But that that's a point too. Like there is a line that's crossed. Once you cross that line, it's like, hey man, how come you're not paying me that? So interesting point. Well, Good and point. the other the other thing about this is not just the uh, the amount either, because that well, while that does factor into it, both cases you know described here, it's more about the longevity. True, it's, true. It's someone investing in them for a longer term than just a year at a time, or true. You know, both guys are getting into the we'll say their later part of their careers or you know they're not like yes. rookies right like so they've both been in the league for a number of years so it and as we know in the nfl the the older players while some good like they tend to not garner as much value all the time because there's always someone younger faster stronger True. you know right, right. so these guys they what they're saying at least is they want to be able to keep playing so they want the some team to say, hey, like, yeah, we want you to be around for three, four, five years, however many it is, right? Right, right. So that's mm -hmm. another part of it. Okay, okay. Good point, good point. Um, okay, so this is something else. I, I don't know football that well. Uh, I do know Overwatch because I play Overwatch. So I'm going to go with the Overwatch thing. So in Overwatch, there's tanks and there's DPS. Let's just say there's the guy with the fists who gets close or the close moves. Then there's a sniper in the back. So the terminology I use when I talk to people about it, I use football terminology. I uh, like when I play tank, I am the O line, and then the guy in the back is at the QB. Okay. So when the enemy team does something crazy with a whole lot of bullets, I literally jump in front of that, put my face in front of those bullets. So the, uh, the sniper can do his business. Because if they kill the sniper, then we're screwed. So I'm protecting my guys. That's how I look at it. Yep. Or more specifically in this case, I am eating bullets so my other teammates do not, and then we can win. That's that's the whole deal about being a tank. Now, running back, to my knowledge, is not O-line per se, but it is still a man who eats a lot of bullets. Like you're saying, there's a high probability of being injured. Oh, yeah. Um. So I I will say that I've heard this in WoW, and I know this from Overwatch. Tank is a position that is very unappreciated. Um, 
I was, oh, okay, so now I'm really dating it. But I was watching a game yesterday. It was Houston number 10. And anyway, three Cowboys guys tried to tackle him. The dude was spinning all, all over the place, dodged a guy, dodged another guy. It was an incredible play, amazing play. And then, you know, he, he got a whole lot of yardage. But you and I already know when the game's over, well, let's talk to the quarterback. You know, um, I I get that. Quarterback calls plays. Quarterback does a lot of good stuff. But also other men are on the field. It is a team game. Um, so, again, in like in Overwatch, which is a thing I know better, team game. We have healers. I thank the healers. You know, they're not eating bullets like me, but they heal me. They keep me alive. It's a team effort. Mm-hmm. Um I understand, like, not that a running back is a tank because an O-line would be more of a tank, but a running back eats bullets. I get him saying, yo, can I get can I get paid for this? I get that because at the end of the day, the quarterback gets a whole lot of love. That's how that works, too. That's just how football is, unfortunately. O-line gets less love. Running backs probably, you know, less less side, more than more side. So I understand where they're coming from. That's all I'm saying on that one. Mm. See, but yeah. the interesting point of that is that He's not asking. Well, I guess I guess he is kind of asking for quarterback money because those those other backs that got paid by other teams got like quarterback type money. Ah, uh-huh, there you go. Right, right. I mean, it, it's a hard call. So here here's something I thought of a long time ago, and I'm gonna assume it was Joe Montana. There's some badass quarterback, so they're like, all right, let's watch the plays. So here's what happens. Okay, snap goes. Quarterback is the ball. He falls back. Falls back again. Falls back again. None of the enemy team has even gotten close to him. Falls back again. Then the throw. Oh, great throw. Touchdown, whatever. Dude, you had like three hours to eat a sandwich and throw that uh, football. Why? Because your O-line was on on point, all right? Because I've seen O-line suck. I've seen that too. Quarterback gets creamed, you know? This is still a team game. Now, I'm not saying the guy on the O-line is exactly the same as the quarterback because he's not. But the only reason why the quarterback could spend, like, okay, literally, let's just say it was like 10 seconds, which is a long fucking time. He had a long time with that ball. The only reason why he got to get there was the O-line was, quote, unquote, eating bullets for that, you know? They were there doing those things. So that's all. It's a team game. It's, for me, I don't think I don't think there's enough love spread in general anyway, unfortunately. For the record, the flip side is true too, though. Uh, when a quarterback has literally less than two seconds to throw the ball, Shit's going to go wild. Interception. Yeah, like O-line block for him, please. So, I mean, it cuts both ways. Cuts both ways. Anyway, I'm just saying, I get a running back saying, hey, pay more, please. I get that. So, okay. Well, um, okay. No, so, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was going to change well, it to something else. No, okay. well, uh, it's interesting even more so when you kind of think about, like, the after effects of playing football, right? These guys yes, are, they're trying to, they're too. trying to, stay healthy for now they're trying to have longer careers you know leave their yes. quote-unquote legacy even though it's their job and they get paid a shit ton of money whatever but yes. the whole like protecting yourself you yes. know with the whole uh, head trauma concussions that that was yes. that, that uh will smith movie uh yes. and like junior Seau, for example yes a lot of interesting like these guys take a beating and they want. They probably also want to have longevity after football as well. Understandable. Yes. Yes. I. You know what? I have to say this. Um, there was a guy. Don't remember his name, but he's a quarterback, famous man, and he's done already. He he finished playing. So anyway, there was an interview with him once, and he's like fifty at most. He's very young, and he said, "You know, I was driving home the other day, and then I forgot where I lived." And I was like, "Whoa!" That like, fuck, man! I drive home all the time. You know, I, I drive to the library. I drive to the store. This I don't even think about it. I just do it. It's like effortless for the most part. I know where I'm going. I know where to turn. This dude forgot his own house. And it's like, man, that was rough. I don't remember if it was a lineman or what his position was. But of course, he has taken hits. And he was part of the study. And they showed that his brain was messed up. You know, like he forgot how to go home. That's crazy. Like that's, he he's living it, you know. Um, you you touched upon it, and I want to say the way I was gonna phrase it because it's a similar similar concept. I put it down. Okay, so Vanilla Ice, all right. Um, he's dancing on stage. People be like, "Ah, oh, you sell out. Shame on you!" And then he's dancing on stage, getting paid all that good stuff. And then later on, he's doing an interview much later, 
and someone says, I don't know, man, how'd you deal with that? You know, you're dancing on stage like a monkey or whatever insulting phrasing. And he goes, hey, man, if I were to pay you a million dollars, you would dance on stage. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know how to dance. You fucking pay me a million. I will dance on stage. <laughs> that's right now. You pay me that money. I'll dance on stage right now. You know, so the flip side, and I cannot stress this enough. How much, how much money would make it okay for me to receive brain damage? I don't know what that number is, but it's probably higher than any NFL person has ever been paid. Like that, that just sounds terrible. You know, again, the example of the guy who couldn't even drive home, his brain just like, he just couldn't do it. He kept thinking, he just couldn't remember it. Like that is rough. Um, I believe on some news program I saw, essentially they're like 40 or 50 years old, but their brains are like 90. You know, like there's a ton of damage. So the vanilla ice logic, like, well, what's the number? I'm like, I don't think there is one. I don't think I could be cool with it. You know, that's terrible. Interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's funny when you put it that way, because quite literally, you're right in that. What what amount of money in the millions right. would, would you get paid to get brain damage? That that's yes. like imagine that like that's go, crazy. Go 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 yeah. to Alabama and be like, all right, Saban, like, which which one of these guys like gonna make hundred million dollars but brain damage? Yes, it's pretty fucked up it's if like, you think about it. it. It really is. It really is. Um, so on that note, I'll add this in. This is from again the news, but I'm pretty sure it's like other people have agreed to it. So in the old days, let's say you're playing uh, football or whatever. Boom, you get creamed. We know you blacked out. We saw you black out. You stand back up. Oh, shit. Well, what do I do, coach? Get back out there, man. What? You complaining? Get out there and play. You know, like, that was the old way. <laughs> that was the old, like, um, the flip side, and I have heard this from the news straight up. The old way was also eat these pills. Get out there. That's it. Like, they hand them pills. So now, um, I think for high school, but now there are rules. You get knocked out. We stop. There's, there's a thing that happens. I guess they bring in a paramedic or something, but there's a process. Because in the old days, it was, ah, oh, we cool, get back out there. That's it's, it. It's funny. There, I think, I forget who it was. It was a ex-NFL player relatively recently. And he, he was being interviewed, again, forget by who. This is, maybe I'm completely wrong about this. But anyway, being interviewed okay. and he's, he's like, yeah, we just play hurt all the time. Like I played, yeah, yeah. I played like half a season with a broken collarbone. Like I completely believe that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You, you just yeah. do it. It's just it's just what you do. One okay, and and the big thing one it's it's these guys are fighting for their lives a lot of times just to get another contract. Yes. I th- and I think that was the context context in which that interview was, in yes. that he's like, well, fucking contract year. If I go out now, then I ain't getting another one, or it's gonna be horrible. So we're just gonna play hurt. I'll, I'll have to survive it, you know. Okay, let's say I worked at, um, I don't know, a really normal job. Let's say like McDonald's or whatever. Okay, so, all right, I got to go to work today. Oh, no, you know, I have a, a stomachache or something. You can you can imagine a lot of fathers saying, oh, shut the fuck up, go to work. You were scheduled, go to work. Like, okay, sorry, dad, time to go to work. That's a normal cultural thing for one man to say to another. You shut up, you get back in there. Now, the flip side is, some guy making hamburgers with a stomachache is not a guy blacking out or getting his leg destroyed, you know? But the coach is still there, unfortunately. Like, I am certain that either his own teammates... Oh, you know what? You know what? This happened recently. Um, I think the Packers were getting creamed, and then Aaron Rodgers got hurt. They brought in some other guy. No offense to the other guy. He was not doing well. So then they're bringing Aaron Rodgers back out. And I'm just sitting there like, Dude, for real? Is this wise? And Aaron Rodgers, he's playing like literally hobbling on the field. You can see him hobbling. They won, which is holy shit levels of impressive. But anyway, I don't know if someone gave him the speech, but clearly in his mind and other people's minds, you know what, man? I'd rather have you hobbling out there than us lose. That's crazy, you know? And that's a visual one. We can see the damage. But with a lot of the brain stuff, we don't know until like a decade later, which is sad and scary. But that culture doesn't help. And I mean, we have that everywhere. It's just that in the NFL, it also includes getting knocked out, like literally concussions. Terrible. Now to get even more meta, the, 
Yeah, we're, we're talking about the whole like injuries, brain damage, all that shit, which is all crazy. But yes. that's fucking entertainment for true, American. True. It's called Very American true. football, right? Places around yes. the world must be like, you guys are fucking stupid. Like that's yes. and for whatever reason, we just love that shit. Like maybe, yes. maybe like we're just fucked up in our culture. Like that's well, I mean, one yes, Americans can be slammed on this. However, I will say too that there were. I'm going to assume Greek gladiators. I don't know, but sure. the term breads and circuses. Have yeah, you heard yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same concept, right? Like that's what that was. Keep the masses entertained. Um, the My beef is not quite that. Although, of course, people have the bloodlust. My beef is I am certain. I am certain that these players are told, well, fuck you then. I'm going to hire someone else. Like that. that is the opposite of, you know, having a team. That is the opposite of caring about your employees, unfortunately, you know? I, well, so, ba- yeah. Basically, yeah. no, they are. They yeah, no, of course, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. Go out there and impress me or you're fired. Like, geez, that sucks. So, um, okay, slightly different because I have thought this before. So my, okay, I've, I've watched football since I was a child, but there's a huge period where I just didn't watch. And I understand it now more, not child, so... But um, anyway, there was a point where I saw this and it blew my mind. There was some quarterback. I don't remember who he was, but he had the ball. It's a quarterback. And then, boom, he breaks into a sprint. I'm like, whoa, this is, for me, very outside the box. Like, this is an exciting moment as a fan. You know, and then he did it. Oh, wow. And then he kind of did it again. And I'm like, oh, I guess he's that guy who likes to run and pass. Now, strategically, I think that's badass. I think that's amazing because as a defender, if he was just throwing man, I wouldn't have to worry about that. But now, because he also runs in Street Fighter, high low mix ups, you know, he's he's mixing it up. It's like, oh wow, this is really difficult for me to 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 get a handle on. And then I had to ask myself, wait a minute, this is totally not normal. A lot of quarterbacks don't do that. They stay in the pocket, whatever, they stay away on purpose. And then I thought about it some more, and I think I once heard a game where the quarterback starts running and the the announcer he had a comment. And all I could think was, you know what? There's probably a lot of coaches are like, oh my God, he's running. Oh my God. Whew. Okay, okay. He did not get creamed. That's where they slide or whatever, you know? But logically, especially with the running back commentary, like the Le'Veon Bell thing, every time you run, you could get owned and you could get owned hard. So it's a weird moment, you know? Like, because the flip side of that too is I've seen quarterbacks, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. Uh, I like the Giants. Um, I've heard Eli Manning get a lot of shit. So one of them was the the defender like looked at him and he instantly crumbled to the ground. So I <laughs> see there's there's a manliness comment here. That's the culture. You're not man enough, you know. But the flip side of this is I think Eli Manning played some kind of record number of games. Well, yeah, he plays to not get fucked up, you know. But if you're the running quarterback, and I can't name them, I'm sure you can name someone who was a running quarterback. He got nailed. Like Kaepernick, that's a le- famously Kaepernick. Ah. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. See, that's a thing, you know, like you just, you always roll those dice when you do. So I, I get that there is a chance, unfortunately. And yeah, like the, um, the other guy, his name, Thomas, you know, the Thomas yep. guy, that's a thing, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it is a thing. And once again, like that's the whole thing, like quarterbacks, they get paid big money and they try to not get injured like they try to have longevity and like you said they don't run running backs no choice if we're going to give you the ball True. you're going to run you're going to get slammed you know 25 to 30 times per game i was at some kind of thing in chinatown and there were lion dancers now as a child i've seen them before and i'm like cool whatever but then i was older and i'm watching so there's these super badass moves okay so Normally, what you get is the front guy and the back guy. It's a, it's a two-person thing. So the back guy, first of all, he's bent over the whole time because the illusion is he's the back half of a lion or yep, dragon yep, or whatever. Yep. So first of all, man, that must suck. That must be tiring, you know? Okay. Second of all, the thing I was watching was very cool. It was a lion on stilts. Not not stilts attached, but there's like stilts in the ground. The lion climbs up the stilts, all this cool shit. And then I realized... Yo, the front half of this, not that bad. Granted, you got to carry the heavy shit, but at least you get to stand up straight. 
there's a cool moment where the lion has to reach something on stilts, but it's low to the ground. So essentially, the back man needs to swing the front man to pick it up or whatever. It's ridiculous. It's like acrobatics. And then I thought, you know that back guy has to be freaking strong to pull all these moves. And you also know he has to be super coordinated on blah, blah, blah. blah. And I'm like, you know what, man? On paper, you're the ass. You're the ass of this creature, which is just sad. But all those cool moves are made possible by the badass, you know, the, the strong man in the back. So again, team effort. That's all. That's all I'm saying, yeah. Commenting back on the whole cultural thing, like, I, yes. I don't know. I just think it's crazy. Like, I, I mean, are these guys worth this much money? And, you know, w- once upon a time, I used to think, no, but fuck, maybe they are, you know? Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so here, here's something I did, uh, I wrote about once. So um, my friend, before he was a security guard, I think he still is. So anyway, security guard, he's standing at some place and he's doing his thing. And then a man he does not know walks up to him and he says, man, I wish I had your job. And he just walks away. And it's just like, what a stupid fuck. Okay, first of all, totally uncalled for, just a random ass comment. Second of all, I know what my friend does. He's my friend. He tells me I see him. You know, security guard, they they walk the grounds and make sure things are yep. safe. Shit, it's the f- they don't do a lot of stuff. That includes standing there. That's just part of it. Yep. So anyway, um, it was just, just unnecessary for that shit to happen. But what I'm getting at is the pay thing. Okay? So I'm sure for that random schmo, he was like, you get paid too much. You just stand. Oh, my God. And like, stupid and ignorant. Um, okay. So what is a teacher, right? A teacher sculpts young minds. A teacher makes our society not stupid. I am very grateful for what they do. Having said that, especially in Hawaii, teachers are underpaid. How much is what a teacher does worth? Now, you could argue, who gives a rip, right? Teachers are a dime a dozen. They're so common. Pay them less. The flip side of this equation for me is one man getting paid a million dollars. Now, in a way... Yeah, there are people who deserve to be paid that much. But in another way, it's also like, should it be paid that much? So the example that this came from for me a long time ago was a baseball guy. I don't remember. Maybe A-Rod, some big name guy. And he's getting paid a shit ton of money. And I'm like, first of all, I'm sure he's amazing. I've never watched him. Uh, second of all, it's not, it's not just his skills, though. Because another way of putting this is, is this man's pay worth 500 teachers or whatever you know what i mean like a like an entire school's worth of teachers <laughs> see what i'm saying interesting like economics hard... no no yeah. interesting <laughs> interesting economics okay that's a hard call for me and i guess because this is juiced i know way less about baseball so i could just say golf because i care less about golf but like football at least i watch it i guess you know i get entertained by it i like it but i know for certain a teacher shapes young minds that's a big difference and what it provides is also a big difference. So that's that's just commentary on money and how people are paid. That's all. Interesting. Yeah. Is yeah. is one Levy on Bell worth like two thousand <laughs> teachers of his, you know, fifty million dollar contract that he's not getting? Hard call. That'll yeah, be the see. headline of this episode. How many teachers <laughs> is one NFL player worth? <laughs> But I mean, in the same a- in the same aspect, though, right? The entertainment value and the wide, you know, one teacher will teach, you know, thirty students a year, and that's actually a lot, right? One NFL player, it you know, entertains millions and millions every you know every game every time. the The reach is great, so True. it's. Again, interesting economics, right? Like education, entertainment, you know. All, no, it's interesting to think about, right? The the reach, the <laughs> how many? T- I can't get over this now. How many teachers is one? <laughs> oh my god, fuck! Yes, but I get you. I get you. And I, I would the the sad thing about it is that in in America, at least, I would actually wager that if you know. If it weren't like a politician saying it, I think that if we really asked ourselves, the entertainment value does outweigh the education value. I, oh man, I. It's I sad to say it. it. Yes, it's I, it's sad yes. to say, but if we really asked ourselves truly, it probably is. Okay. Okay. So this is from Men in Black, and I think it's a great conversation. 
Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so Will Smith is like sitting on a bench and he's debating joining with him, uh, Men in Black. It's way in the beginning. And then Will Smith says something like, dude, the people should know about this. You know, all these aliens on Earth, people should know about this. And then Agent K, Tommy Lee Jones, he's like, you know, the average person or just one person, like pick a guy, pick pick all kinds of guys, pick someone you know. If you were to tell them about aliens, you, they could they might be able to digest it. You know, they, they might be able to get it and understand and like be able to, to just deal with it. Having said that, the masses are not ready at all for this. And I'm like, oh, interesting. I had a professor before. He was a dick, straight up. But anyway, he had a he had a phrase he liked saying repeatedly, and it was never underestimate the stupidity of the masses. And it's just like, geez, what a bleak, random thing to say to your students. But anyway, I like the men in black idea. And what I mean by that is, I believe that if a man in black came up to me, some guy, and he told me about these things, one, I might think he's crazy, but then two, if he were to show me the shit, I'd be like, you know, I, I do believe you and I get that. I can accept this information. I will not fucking have a heart attack or throw a brick through a window. I'm not going to do either of those things. But I know for damn sure that a lot of the masses, I can't say the same thing for. Um I, I've seen, okay, so here's a great example. Uh, it was me and my ex. We were in Waikiki on Halloween. So there's a lot of people. That, all that means is there's a whole lot of humans and it's like a, it's, a, it's an event. Everyone's together. So in Waikiki, there's this one crosswalk. I don't remember which one, but it's a busy one. So we're on one side and the other people are on the other side. And in this case, there's a shit ton of people. Um, interestingly enough, there's a barricade as well. So I remember grabbing my girl. And like inching her to the side of the barricade just in case. Now, why did I do that? As we were waiting, we're motherfucking people waiting at a stoplight. That's it. This is not a soccer game. There's no rioting. We're just people at a stoplight. Anyway, I could feel the energy. I wouldn't say it was a violent energy, but there was an energy. There, there's just something. You just feel it. It just, it just felt weird. And I knew once that light changed, I wouldn't get trampled. I'm tall enough and big enough, and she wouldn't either. She was with me. But I knew there was that risk of a problem. I could just feel it. And then once it happened, boom, I, I moved to the side. We're clear. Let them do the salmon thing, whatever. I don't care. Let them do their own thing. But this is people at a fucking stoplight, you know, just a stoplight. You could feel that energy. And I even asked her later, like, yo, was I imagining that? Did you get that? She's like, no, I totally got that. And it's a stoplight. So anyway... I know, and this is confirmed by the news, saving $50 at Walmart, some people would trample a child for that. Not, not directly correlated, but the event of saving $50 is enough to have people behave irresponsibly, to put it mildly. And then someone dies. I've heard of this. Black Friday stuff is ridiculous. <sighs> so anyway, can I see someone saying, yeah, my entertainment is more important to me than a child becoming educated unfortunately yes you know i'm a nerd i like writing i write about writing i know where i stand but i unfortunately know also the masses sadly i was waiting to see where you went with that <laughs> and i'm glad no i so, okay <laughs> yeah no i no i i 100 agree that yeah. i'm sorry internet y'all are stupid don't at me. No, no, it's <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But <laughs> no, but yes, um, I I agree that the the general populace would probably take that in a heartbeat. And it, it again, whether or not they're honest about it, I think that would actually be the the feeling, the internal feeling. Yes. And it, you know, it I, is kind of sad to say when we put it that way. But I mean, I maybe like if you really think about it, maybe in some ways that's okay. Ooh. You know, maybe. Well, I, I get. I don't want to get too philosophical here, but right, right, you right. know, in, in terms of like what, like what we, I guess, you're, you know, between a few things that are certain in life, you're gonna pay taxes, you're gonna die, right? right so, right. I mean, with that, maybe that's okay that you know you value your entertainment, like at, at that high of a level. Okay. Here, here's something sad but accurate. Let's say there's a little boy. Let's go with Maine because Maine is very far from Hawaii. 
He's in Maine and he's about to learn fractions, which is cool. He needs to be taught by a teacher. Good for him or her. They're getting paid, I hope. Good stuff, all that good stuff. I'm never going to meet that boy. I don't know who he is. I, I, I like the idea that children are learning more. That matters to me. But hey, man, Le'Veon Bell, he plays football on my TV. Like, it's terrible. Even just saying it now, it just feels, ugh. But it's true. There is, quote unquote, more of a connection in that way. It's weird. Um, I don't know what that's worth. But you mentioned reach earlier, and that is a kind of reach. I'm never going to meet that little boy. Never. He's going to grow up over there. He's going to do his thing over there. I'm never going to meet him. But these guys on the NFL, yeah, I've, I've seen them on TV. I know them, you know. I know Odell Beckham's special haircut. Back in <laughs> you know, see what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a weird thing, though, but it, that's true. Um, for the record, I would prefer it that the teacher matters more. For the, I mean, in case you didn't already assume, but yeah. I mean, I, I would like to altruistically believe that too, but yes. But again, the interesting point of it is, I think like, and I, I won't be one to say like, yeah, society is all fucked up, you know, like right, right. I, I, I believe that everything kind of settles itself out, right? I don't. Yes. I, I believe that there's a reason why you know, Le'Veon Bell is worth two thousand teachers, in in dollar value. I get you. Right, you know, right. like it, it's it. Everything. It, it's not. It's not an accident, right? No one's like cheating the system because of that. You know, I think. I think it. It all kind of plays into like every the the system of society, as weird as that sounds, just kind of evening out and right, right. leveling. Okay, I'm gonna throw that throw this at you and I'll get your opinion on it. I don't remember what country this is. This is or was real. So this existed in the real world. Okay, so let's say I, I make shoes. I earn X. You also make shoes. Fuck, your shoes are better, man. Well, you make X plus Y. Good for you. That guy over there, superior shoes. He gets paid more. That's how that works. So in this country, wherever it was, people get paid more when they do better. Of course, that's how it should be. Now, here's the flip side. In America, one man can make a million, two million, even fucking a hundred million dollars, right? There's a lot of money for one man. He can do that. In that other country, they get capped at one million, period. Doesn't matter if you're the best inventor ever. One million per year, that's all you get. Done. What are your thoughts on this? Wait, is that a real thing? That's a thing. That either is or was. Mm. There's some country where they cap you. It's like, congratulations, you've reached the cap. Hmm. So in that case, we're talking about government inherently okay, keep, okay, like mediating point. their own economy in, yes. a, in a sense, right? Because it, it ensures that in whatever place this is, that the eco economy stays balanced. Yes. But it's the government imposing that because they themselves are trying to regulate their, that economy. I think yes. that, well, when I really think about it, that's actually, it's not, entirely a bad thing i i think that in essence within the walled off you know borders of that country there or where, that place they are trying to ensure economic stability such that you know everyone kind of knows that greed and money drives things like war drives you know social unrest and things like that in general. So I believe that even though it's a potentially primitive way of doing that by capping a person's income or a personal income, I think that they're inherently trying to prevent those types of things from happening. And again, I think it's, as I mentioned, a primitive way of doing it. But if that's what's effective, that's what's effective. And that's cool. Well, I mean, the key word you just used there is effective. I don't know if it was a good thing, but I do know that was their thing. You know what I mean? Um, so here, here's my beef with that because I thought about it too. It's like, on one hand, it does solve some things. For instance, how much more should a CEO make than the you know frontline cashier? And that's one of the things about Costco that's amazing. That, that number is the smallest ever. Every other company is crazy. But anyway... Let's just say I was making, I don't feel like saying all the nines. So let's just say I was making $10 less than a million dollars a year. 
Let's just say I was making that much money. So then now the next question is, all right, Alvin, you're you're so successful. What do you want to work on now? Fuck it, I'm done. What, what do you mean? I retire. Why are you retire? I can't make more than this. I'm done. So, so that's a weird thing too. Um, a lot of C and this is from a class about pay and all that stuff. A lot of CEOs, it's like, why do they get paid so much? Well, the idea is if I was a guy and I'm trying to entice CEO X over there, but that other guy also wants CEO X, I need to make my thing look amazing for him to come over here. So the flip side of the $1 million thing is people who pass a million dollars, I I wonder how hard they work. Uh, here, Here's a great example. Um, I think it was China. If you invent something in China, like something amazing, you invent it. Government comes in and says, cool, thanks, peace. And that's it. In America, you invent something, you get to patent it, it's yours, you get to make money out of it, blah, blah, blah. And inventions happen in America, and it's good. And in theory, at least, in China, there's no reason to invent unless you want to help the government. You know what I mean? If there's any kind of negative vibe you have toward the government, why on earth would you invent stuff? You're just helping them. So the cap, I agree and disagree with, I guess. I do find it interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where I stand. I'm on both sides for that one. That was a weird one. Well, see, like I said, I, I, I can see the what I think is the logic behind it. But yes. I think it's a very primitive way of doing that, you yes, know. True, I think it's true. a very like, uh, we'll say, Dragonian effort, right? To yes, to yes. try to do that. Where they, so again, if the the simple theory is that money, greed, bad, you know, money yes. equals greed equals bad equals, you know. So okay, we'll stop money. So uh, it's a very, yes, you know, so it's true. a very simple way of doing it. But as you said, there are other things that lack, just like the intellectual property well that being aside ip laws in the united states are fucked up like in general but mm. but you are right in that because they exist it does encourage things like that to happen here because right. you're there is no cap here it it encourages competition and things like that to happen here yes yes so true very interestingly i, I mean I guess there's a give and a take to that in either in either side. Mm-hmm. Sad but true. Yes. So anyway, NFL. Back to <laughs> yeah. Back to yeah. Back back to how many teachers? Okay. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Cool. Cool. So back okay. to okay. Pregnant pause. Okay. That's fine with the pregnant pause. Yeah. I I don't know if I wanted to add this, so it's up to you. Because for the record, I do want to come across as a guy who likes the Le'Veon Bell argument because I get it. Okay. All right. So pause. Boop, boop, boop. All right, Chris. I don't know the specifics on this that well, but I have heard of this. So let's say, um, let's say I'm a guy who runs an NFL team. I have only so many dollars. With these dollars, the plan is to get the next badass. Perhaps I can get the Heisman man. I, I would love the Heisman man to be on my team. I am about to throw all my money at this man. That's the point. I want him on my team. The flip side is by throwing all my money at him, I have less money to give my boys. So understandably, some of my guys would be upset like, hey, can I get a pay raise, please? And the response is, can you guys all calm down for one second? I'm going to get the Heisman man on our team. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is, to my knowledge, and I think I have the right name here, there was a guy who said, hey, yo, head leader guys, Pay me less. You pay me less, we go out there, we fucking win some games. You pay me less. I Fam- want you to pay me less. Famously, yeah. Tom Brady. Oh, oh, I was going to say Russell Wilson. Was it Tom Brady? Tom Brady. As oh, far as I know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Tom, Tom Brady. Tom Brady regularly takes, you know, less money so that the Patriots can get other talent. That's, that's like a known thing. Oh, wow. Or, or, or at least it's a, okay. it's a thing. Comments yeah, at me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Tom Brady. This is just me with a lack of NFL knowledge. So, oh, fascinating. Uh, I will say this. The Patriots kicker super impressed me. Yeah. Uh, the Patriots, I think it was a running back. Man, I'm, there's many guys that I've been very impressed by. And that would make sense because they would then have the money to spend on other guys. You know? mm-hmm. So, one, I 1 million percent get where Le'Veon Bell is coming from. Two, see the flip side of this is if he said, yo, pay me less. 
give me them rings or whatever, you know, let's get the best team we can get. That's a hard call. And I, I can't imagine asking someone to make that call either then, you know, that's kind of crazy too. It's tough. Like, I, yeah. I, I think that there's a little bit of a difference there because in, in the case, I know, I, I, I know, I, I see what you're getting at with the whole pay me less thing, work yep. for the team thing. But the, the flip side of that is when I say it's Tom Brady, it, I think that story takes a whole nother twist because Tom Brady is going to be the Patriots quarterback all the time. Uh, like, there, there is no point. question that they're not, that they're going to dump him. There's, it's not a question. He knows that he's going to be there. They're going to keep him. You know, he, he knows, you no, know, they, he knows that he's going to get a long, t- you know, his long term contracts. I, I mean, once they started doing really well, it was known that he's going to be the uh, guy, right? They're going to like, so longevity is the key. So interesting. It, it, in, interesting. in that case, in that case, it, I do agree with what you're saying in that, yeah, there are guys famously out there to say, yeah, I just want to win championships. I don't need a max deal, that kind of thing. But yeah. in that case, well, at least in the one you're describing, that guy yes. knew he was going to keep playing. Mm, true. That is true. Interesting. Le'Veon Bell, Interesting. on the other hand, he doesn't know if he's going to keep playing or, or, if, or if an injury is going to mean that some team is not going to take him in at whatever, you know, whatever he may or may not be worth. Yes. So slight difference, but I, I do see I what you're that. getting at. No, I got you. I yeah, still see what you're getting from with, with the whole like some, yeah, you know, some, maybe some guys like, you know, like to win. That's, that's their goal. Some guys want uh, to have longer careers and that's their goal. Okay. I, I, I got to say this, especially about um, injuries. So there's this guy I knew a long time ago. He, um, he was quite a baseball player. For the, all the listeners out there, I'm not referring to Chris. Totally different guy. Okay, so anyway, great baseball player. So I didn't know that. I met him later, and we're just chatting. And someone says, hey, why don't you go ask Guy X your questions? I'm like, oh, okay. So I started talking to him, and he's clearly knowledgeable about it. And you can see it matters to him. There's like a passion to it. So then he says, you know, in high school or whatever year, maybe. No, high school, yeah. In high school, I was a beast. I was doing great. I'm like, shit, that's cool. Did you get a scholarship? Did you blah, blah, blah? And then just fucking silence. And I feel like I kicked him in the nuts. It's just like, oh, uh, what am I missing? He goes, I got injured in blah, blah, blah year, and it all went away. And I'm like, okay. You know, I'm just I'm just going to not talk about it anymore. I feel so bad. But that's all it takes. That one injury fucked him. It fucked him. He lost his passion, you know. He lost his ability, not lost his ability, but you know he couldn't play because he got injured. Just the timing of it, whatever he got hit by or whatever, it fucked him that much. And it's just like, man, all it took was that one thing. And it was baseball. I don't, I don't know what goes wrong in baseball. Like I know in football there's tackling, but for him it, it was just over, and I felt so bad. So I understand where the Le'Veon Bell thing comes from, you know. Yeah. Well, at the very least. Um, we can have our nice headline of how many how many teachers <laughs> is, is it worth to pay an NFL yes. football player. Well, hey man, thanks again for chatting. I- interesting discussion. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on on the whole on the whole uh, holdout situation, injuries, anything like that? Okay, um, I will say that someone who I barely know, but they mentioned Le'Veon Bell, and essentially the spin was shame on him. He's selfish. You know, I, I get what that person was saying. Mm-hmm. The more I learned, especially with this conversation, um, I get where he's coming from. I'm not saying, you know, it's really easy one way or the other. I'm sure there's a whole lot of thinking he had to do, but I understand. And um, in general, I would hope that these guys get more care for their damages and they get treated well. You know, Um, I enjoy football. I enjoy watching it. It's good stuff. And I hope no one is treated, mistreated. So that's all. Exactly. I'm in the same same boat, right? If you read the headline of, of that kind of story, like Le'Veon Bell doesn't report to uh, first doesn't report to the team, sits out games, you know, because he's not getting paid. In, immediately, the the clickbait is well, fuck this guy, like he's a millionaire, you know. Right. But when you really dig into it, and that's why I found this very interesting to kind of look look into and and discuss, is that you can he does have kind of a point if you think about yes. it, and and, and yes. I won't I won't say either side is right or wrong. Because I mean, one could say that this is act- this is your job is to you know kill yourself on TV, but right. it, it's very interesting to look at both sides of it and and really see and understand where they're coming from. But yeah, right. cool man. Totally, totally yes. 
Thanks for listening to the House of Cousins podcast, the show where we take a look at the unique people of the world and the crazy things that they do. We talk about it. We do our best to relate it to you, the listener, but either way, we have a fun time doing it. If you like this, check out other episodes. We are on all the popular podcast services, iTunes, Stitcher, all the like. If you want to see more from us, go to housentnetwork.com. We're a part of the Housent Network. You can see all the cool stuff that we're doing there. Follow us on social media at Housent Network. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the like. Please check out our social pages. And if you like the Alvany goodness, you can find more at alohaalvin.com. It's a home for writers, but hey, I write just like how I speak. So you definitely enjoy that too. And if you want to see more of my stuff, you can check out How's It Chris at Twitter on Twitter.com. That's probably the best place to find me. Once again, I want to thank you for lending us your beautiful ears. And just remember, it's not goodbye. It's see you later. <laughs>